Hey everyone, this week it seems that the main story from last week, namely the culture war, continues to crash and dwindle into left-wing obscurity in a way reminiscent of Channel 4 News or a semi-finalist on The X Factor. You know, I used to always get confused by those talent shows when someone said that their goal in life was to get a platinum album. I mean, I've got dozens of the things downstairs by the Beatles, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin. You know, I know the High Street record stores are in a bad state of repair, but is it that hard to find a copy of Thriller for sale these days? The one musical story I did spot, though, was the decision by some well-meaning idiots to demand that the England rugby fans stop singing Swing Low Sweet Chariot on the spurious basis that it's supposedly racist and offensive, a decision that really makes me wish that God Save the Queen included a verse specifically about Prince Philip. Currently there's nothing really being said about the other Six Nations team's anthems, although that's probably due to the attention-seeking but ultimately lazy activists being unwilling to learn French or Italian. In a contrastingly patriotic turn of events where the news was released that Boris has decided to repaint the Prime Ministerial jet plane in a patriotic Union flag pattern, some outlets made a comparison to the jumbo jet in the Austin Powers movies, whilst other reporters decided to appeal to the youth readership by referencing that dress worn by Jerry Halliwell at the Spice Girls. That's a reference, by the way, that's 25 years old and largely went unnoticed by anyone under the age of 30, let alone anyone born in this century. Personally speaking, I think that Boris is just doing it to pedantically correct people when they call it the Union Jack. Pierce Morgan went a little bit different with his references though after photos emerged this week of him wearing an SS uniform at a party many years ago. Controversial indeed. And yet the strangest part of it all is that this is still not the most controversial story involving Piers Morgan and people getting dressed up in army uniforms. Although it is one of the stories that the Mirror decided not to stick in its front page this time. Finally, the one other story that's worth mentioning is the decision by the NHS to abandon its in-house development of a contact tracing app in favour of one developed by Apple and Google, for free by the way. It really is worth examining the concept of what's happened as it's not that far different to if the Foreign Office decided to stop buying A4 paper and develop its own in-house size ratio before spending billions of pounds establishing a manufacturing and logistics chain. You know, say what you will about the Iraq dodgy dossier, at least it was printed on normal paper. Nonetheless, Apple and Google offered a product for free and yet the NHS ploughed ahead with its own vanity project. It was slow, insecure and cost a fortune, and that's just the NHS. The app that the department developed was even worse. The sole cause of this seems to have really been an overpromoted civil servant by the name of Matthew Gould. He's a former ambassador, and you think maybe he's got a past life in the software industry, but in fact he's got less experience than the fictional meerkats in that price comparison advert. As far as I can see, the only experience he even has is having PPE on his CV, but even then it's a politics, philosophy, and economics degree from Oxbridge, rather than any real-world experience. What a surprise. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.